through every The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in, out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a, bapti a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people from Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with cam camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and entire the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Caitlin. Since I know there are a number of biblical scholars in this room, uh, you are familiar with the fact that Mark's Gospel was the first of the Gospels to be written. Its author was John Mark, who was a close associate of Peter's. He would have also known Paul among many of the other greats of that period of time. In fact, he was a traveling companion of Paul's for a while, and even had a little falling out, if you will, <laughs> only to come back together at a later time. Mark never knew Jesus. He wasn't a part of that inner circle. He would have been too young at the time, I suppose. But having been a great associate of Peter's, he would have learned much in the course of his time listening to Peter as he shared his sermons, listening to him as he shared his stories about Jesus. And over the course of time, Mark wrote down all these words that he had heard. And then in the course of time, he would organize those words and bring them to us as the first gospel written about the ministry of Jesus. Now, unlike Matthew and Luke, the other synoptic gospels, uh, synoptic uh, just simply meaning that they're very similar in nature, Mark doesn't record a birth narrative of Jesus. Rather, he jumps in at a point where Jesus is beginning his ministry. And prior to that, he introduces us to a cousin of Jesus named John the Baptist. John the Baptist will be credited as the one proclaimed by the prophets of old who would come preparing the way, announcing the coming of Messiah. Now, John is an interesting character. He would come onto the scene preaching a gospel of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. But one thing you need to know about John he never lost the focus of his message. He always made sure that whoever he was speaking to understood that there was someone greater than him who was coming on the scene, someone who was mightier than him, someone that he wasn't even worthy to bend down and untie his sandals. John would say, I baptize with water, but he will baptize with the Holy Spirit. 
As I said a moment ago, John is an interesting character. He is the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy. And he is first seen here in Mark in the desert. He wears strange clothes. He has an odd diet. I mean, I don't know about you, I could probably live with the honey, but locusts? Not even if they're chocolate covered, I don't think I want those things. He's different and yet he emerges on the scene in the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy to proclaim the arrival of the Messiah, of the Savior of the world. And so he goes about preaching this gospel of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Many will come to him, many will be baptized by him. But he never ceases to remind those who come that there is one even greater who is just on the horizon. And because of that, John will become quite popular in his own way, but he never wavers in his message. Indeed, he was here to prepare the way of the Lord for his coming. And now here we are, all these years later, once again engaged in the midst of an Advent season. It's a beautiful time of the year when all of us are making preparations for the celebration of Christ's birth. But I want to talk about some things today that aren't related to how we decorate our homes or the presents we might buy or any of those things. I want to ask us, what are we doing? What are we doing to prepare for the Lord's arrival? You ever think about that? What are we doing? I mean, really, what are we doing to prepare for the Lord's arrival? Now, there's a lot of things that come to my mind. I'm going to mention a couple of them to you today, and uh, hopefully this might strike a chord <coughs> as we think about how we can prepare the way of the Lord. And one of the ways that we can do that, and I believe it's so critically important in everyone's life, is that we share the hope that we have in Christ Jesus with everyone we meet. If ever there was a time in history when we need to experience hope, it is today. Amen. Now, I've heard preachers make comments like that all my life. I really have. But I really believe this to be the case because if ever there was a time when this world needs Hope, it is today. You think about it with me for a moment. In West Virginia alone, we have the highest number per capita of people who have died this year of drug overdose of any other state in the Union. Think about that for a moment. It's epidemic. It's happening every day. Doesn't that say to us that if ever there was a time when this world needs hope, it is now? Or think about the people that you know or have encountered. There are people who struggle with depression every day of their lives. There are people who struggle with loneliness. There are people who struggle because of low-paying jobs. There are single mothers who are trying to raise children with little money to do so, and perhaps even less help. 
Others are dealing with health issues that have brought them to their knees, literally. They're struggling because they're not able to keep up with the things that they would normally do. And still others struggle in abusive relationships and they don't know how to get out. If ever there was a time when this world could use some hope, isn't it now? Isn't it now? I am convinced that in sharing the hope of Christ, we can lift the spirits of the broken. I am convinced that in sharing the hope of Christ, we can offer life to the brokenhearted. I am convinced that in sharing the hope of Christ, we can give to people a second chance who have messed up. I'm convinced of these things because I have witnessed it time after time after time. If ever there was a day when we need to be sharing the hope of Christ, it is now. Because I'm convinced that the greatest gift we can give to anyone in this holy season of the year is the hope of Christ. Not only will we be offering something that is special to someone in need, but you'll be offering this precious gift to our Savior as well. Because didn't Jesus say something like this one time? Whereas you've done it unto one of these, the least of my brothers, you've done it unto me. Isn't that true? A second way that we might prepare ourselves for the coming of Christ is that we do something spontaneous. Have you ever done anything spontaneous? Raise your hand if you've ever done something spontaneous. I mean, seriously. And what I'm getting at today is this. Why not, in this Advent season, why don't you offer a random act of kindness to someone you meet. It can be a perfect stranger, it doesn't matter. Just offer a random act of kindness. Maybe the next time you go to your favorite restaurant, give the person who waits on you a little extra. It might make a big difference in their lives. Now, at my age, I know I'm probably repeating stories that I've told before, so bear with me. <laughs> I'll never forget several years ago, uh, Jim Griffith and Paul Nickerson and I were in a conference down at Chief Logan Park, and, and uh, since uh, I was responsible for getting them back to the airport to fly off to their next event, wherever that was, we had a little bit of time before that flight and uh, we left uh, Chief Logan Park around two o'clock, I suppose, and, and um, these guys were hungry and they wanted to know if there was any place around there that they could get a good home-cooked meal. And I said, I don't know, but I could inquire. <laughs> And a lady recommended a little restaurant in Chapmanville, West Virginia. Any of you ever been to Chapmanville before? All right, a few of you have. Now, uh, they recommended this restaurant, and so we went there. It's by now probably 2.15, 2.30 in the afternoon. The rush hour is over. <laughs> and when we went in and sat down at the table, the waitress came out and she said this right out of the gate. She said, them Christians ate all the baked steak. <laughs> And then they ate all the chicken. We only have meatloaf left. So we looked at each other, we decided we'd try the meatloaf. <laughs> 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 
And she came back on more than one occasion to fill our drinks or see if we needed anything like that. And, and each time she came back, she made another comment or two about them Christians. <laughs> she said, I hate Sundays. And we said, why? <laughs> Well, them Christians come in here and they are so demanding. <laughs> they want everything and they leave the worst tips. <laughs> we got our heads together and decided we were going to show her that not everyone's like them Christians. <laughs> and so we all dug into our wallets and between us we came up with about a hundred bucks. We just laid it on the table and walked out. Got in the car. I'd already started the car. We were heading to the airport. Hadn't pulled out of the lot yet and this lady came running out with tears in her eyes. And she thanked us from the depths of her heart because she said, you don't know what this means to me. She said, now, now I can buy my baby food this week. It was a simple, random act of kindness. We wanted her to know that not everyone is like them <laughs> Christians but that indeed there are people who love Christ and care enough about the people they encounter to try to lend a helping hand there are other simple random acts of kindness you can do maybe Maybe you have a neighbor that can't get out much and maybe you just want to bake them a pie or prepare a meal and carry it over some evening and say, here it is. I'd bake a pie, but I don't know for sure if I've ever done that. Uh, maybe I did one time. Didn't I do that one time? No? <laughs> Oh, well. So I may get left out on that deal. <laughs> but can't you imagine how it might brighten someone's day if you just did something that simple? Just something that simple. I don't know about you, but it feels good when you do something kind for someone else without the expectation of any kind of reward, without the expectation of anyone giving you any praise or glory for it, it feels right, doesn't it? And it's something all of us can do. It doesn't have to be elaborate. Maybe it's no more than just a kind word, but it can go a long way toward lifting the spirits of someone. When Jesus came to this earth, God gave us the greatest gift of all. Amen. In Christ Jesus, we have hope. In Christ Jesus, we have a peace that passes all understanding. In Christ Jesus, we have hearts that are transformed and freed from the weight and the burden and the guilt of all of our sin. And dear friends, as we prepare once again for His coming, we have the power to lift the spirits of the brokenhearted, don't we? We have the power to brighten someone's day. We have the power to change a life forever. Just as Jesus always gave us His very best, 
Shouldn't we do the same? Amen. Amen. I want us to take a moment to pray. And as we pray this day, think about what you can do to prepare the way for our Lord's coming. And then after we pray, we're going to sing a great hymn of the church, Lift Up Your Heads, Ye Mighty Gates. And as we're singing, if God has impressed upon your heart to do something spontaneous, if God has impressed upon your heart to offer a word of hope to a friend, a neighbor, or a random stranger, why don't you come and pray and say, Lord, give me the strength to follow through with what you've called me to do. Let's pray.